Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to look into Java objects and Java classes. We will see how they are related to each other and how we do we create objects from um, classes. And we'll also dive into uh, look into the, under the hood how the whole assignment stuff happens. So this uh, this will help you to understand the the core concepts of assignment and creation of the objects. For this video, I'm going to use IntelliJ, but you can use any ID of your preference. To start with, I'm going to create a new project since it's a Java project. Um, hit next. We are not using any templates, so hit next. Um, I'll name the project as Java underscore 101. Hit finish. So this is gonna bring up the workspace. So just expanding. So this SRC is where all our code will go. To start with, I'm going to create a Java class and I am going to name this as person. So a class usually creates properties and also it creates behavior. And in this case, I am going to use uh, a property called name. So property is something that defines a class. So let's create a property called name. And for behavior, I'm going to create a behavior where the person is telling its name. So I'll name it as say your name. And so that we know that the program is run, we will put a print statement. So my name is, and then we would print the name, which is the property of the person. So for any Java program to run, we would need an entry point. So I could create the entry point in the same class, same person class, but just to keep it, keep things simple, I'm going to create another class called main and I'll create the entry point in that. So go to the source, right click, new Java class, and I'm going to name it as main, but the name doesn't matter. You can name anything. And I'll use the autocomplete feature of the ID and this is my entry point. So the name of the class doesn't matter. However, the, the structure of the method does matter. So it needs to be public static void and the name has to be main. All right, I'm going to create a person class, a variable that would hold a person object. So we have person, new person, and then I'm going to set the name of the person as John. And then I'm going to ask the person to say its name. And now we have a very basic structure. So I'm going to run this program. Let's save and right click and then run main.main and it's going to show up a window where it shows the output as my name is John which comes from say your name behavior. Now let's jump into the PowerPoint uh, to so that I can explain what goes on behind the scene with the code that I have written. So um, in Java there are two main types of memories and they are called stack and also heap. So stack is a place where all the variables go and heap is a place which, where the objects are created. So say I create an object one, it goes in a heap and a variable that is needed to access the object and a link is created. So if we have to access the object one in this case, we do need the uh, variable one, we cannot access the object directly on the heap. So think of it as a, as a, as a pointer where it stores 
it knows how to figure out where the object is stored. And similarly, as we create more objects, we need more variables to refer them. And similarly, object four. So every variable in this diagram points to an object and we can use that particular variable to see which object do we want to access. Now let's see the example of the code that we have written. So this one particular line, a lot of things go, uh, goes on behind the scene. So in here we said person P is equal to new person. So let's see what happens. First of all, the new person, the new keyword is used to create an object. So as soon as this instruction is run, a object is created. And as mentioned, an object is created on the heap. Now let's move on to the next part where person P, in this case, a variable called P is created on the stack. And with that equals assignment, that's how the linking is created. And now we know that P is now, we can use P to access the person object that we just created. So this variable P can be used to access the object that sits in the heap. And the way we access the objects properties and objects behavior are using the dot operator. So which we have done in the next line. So in this case, we said P dot name is equal to John. So essentially what we are trying to do here is we are picking the name from a particular object and then we are setting its name as John. So once the assignment is done, so this is how your object will look like. And after this, we can call say your name using P and then it's gonna use the name and print it. Now let's go back to our ID and learn uh, some more concepts. Um, so this previous three lines are from our uh, previous code, which we have already seen in the, in the presentation. So now let us, let us create a, a let us create another person object. So let's say person p1 is equal to new person, and p1 dot name is equal to let's name this person as Lucy. Um, let's create another object. So let's say person p2 is equal to new person. And what I'm going to do next is I am going to create a couple of other variables and use the existing objects to reassign to them. So, so let's, uh, let's do person P, let's say P3 is equal to P, person P4 is equal to P3, why not? Person P5, is equal to P2, oops, I spelled it wrong. And now let me also remove the link. So the way we do removing a link from the variable to object is we assign the null uh, literal to the, to the variable. So let's do P is equal to null, P1 is equal to null, P2 is equal to now and save the. So let's jump back into the presentation and see what, what's going on in this uh, program. So as I mentioned uh, previously, so we still have stack and heap and uh, on the left hand side, I have uh, the image of the code that I have just written. So when the code starts, so we have already seen when the person uh, P and then uh, when person P is created and we assign the name of the person as John. So in the heap and stack looks something like this. Now moving on to the next instruction. So when these two lines are executed, which is person P1 is equal to new person and P1 dot name is equal to Lucy. So we are creating a new object and also we are assigning that new object to a new variable called P1. 
So once these two statements are executed, so this is how the diagram in the heap and stack looks like. So we have a new person object created because we use the keyword new and then we create a new person object and the P1 is actually pointing to that new person whom we named as Lucy. In the next line, so we created a new person, we created a third person and this third person is being assigned to the variable called P2. Once this line is executed, so this is how the di uh, diagram in the, in the behind the scene looks like. So we have a person which is sitting in the heap. This is a third person we are creating. And um, the variable P2 is now pointing to that third person. And since we haven't assigned the name, so the name of that person will still be now. So now we have three different objects. We have three different variable, all of them pointing to the different um, uh, objects. Now let's say when this line is executed, in this case, we are creating another variable called P3, but we are not creating a new object. We are simply storing the address of the object which is stored behind P and assigning it to the, to the P3. So in the, in the diagram, so it looks like something like this. So we create a new, new variable P3, and now that points to the same object to which P is pointing. And now moving on to the next line. So we create a new variable called P4 and this P4 is pointing to the object which is being uh, pointed by P3. And in the diagram, so it looks like this. And now we create a, another variable called P5 and we are assigning P2's object to the same variable. And this is how the diagram will look like until this uh, program is executed. So as mentioned, we can assign null to a variable. So what assigning null means essentially is to breaking a link. Um, once, a, once we break a link from the variable, after that we cannot access that object via the uh, variable name. So in this case, we are doing p is equal to null. So the link from p to person John will be gone. And when next line is executed, so we have p1 assigned, uh, we are assigning null to p1. And now the link from p1 to the person uh, whose name is Lucy will be gone. And similarly, in the next line, we have p2. And now the link between P2 and, and that person whose name we didn't assign disappears. So now we, in this case, we have three objects. Two of them can be referenced from a variable. So person John can be referenced from P3 or P4. They both point to the exact same person. So it, it doesn't matter if we access from P3 or P4 and person whose name we haven't assigned, which is null, that person can be referenced by P5. Now, one thing to note here um, that I forgot to mention is, since P3 and P4 are pointing to the same person, so let's say we use P3 to change the name. So let's say we say P3 dot name is equal to John Doe. And when we try to access the name using P4, the P4 will actually see the name as John Doe because both the variables are actually pointing to the same object. So they are not two different objects. So they're same object. So when we do the changes using one variable, so the same changes are visible by the uh, second variable. So this is why in Java, we call it uh, call by reference, um, which means that we use the reference uh, to change the object. Now um, also another thing to note in the heap uh, memory is that we do have a link. In fact, we have two links for the person John, P3 and P4. We have one link for person whose name we haven't assigned, which is uh, the link is coming from P5. However, the person Lucy doesn't have any link. So with 
if if an object doesn't have any link uh, from stack that means in the program we can never get the access to that object so to save memory there is a background process in java it's called garbage collector so what garbage collector does is it it, it scans the heap uh, um, at the regular intervals so we don't have control to, um, to on the on the intervals like we don't know when it's gonna run so what it does it checks all the objects and sees the object if an object doesn't have a reference from the stack then that object is marked for garbage collection so then the garbage collector can actually delete the object so once the object is deleted then it makes more the it, it frees up the memory in the in the heap so this is how garbage collection happens behind the scene and this all happens behind the scene as a programmer we don't have to take care of it um, take care ourselves to free up the memory i hope this video uh, helped you to get a better understanding of uh, stack and heap and how the objects are stored and how the variables are stored and how they are referenced um, that's all for the for the presentation that concludes the video if you have any questions in regards to the content please feel free to uh, ask in the comments and also if you have suggestions for improvements or any future uh, videos please let me know I'll make my best effort to um, answer those questions and make videos as uh, requested if you did enjoy the video please hit the like button and also subscribe that will help me greatly thank you so much